Okay, Jabril, we'll start with uh, Brooks from the Advocate. Hey, Jabril, after this game, how much did you guys need this win? And what would you say about the performance defines y'all's identity at this point? Yeah, this win was huge for us. Um, it brought a lot of energy to us. Uh, it's something that we had to get back to, the LSU standard that we've all been knowing that we can do and just show people and prove. But uh, this win was really well needed. And going into Auburn, this is something that we can feed off of. Bro, uh, you know, I just kind of touched on it, but I mean, you guys, you know, kind of build off some confidence here. I mean, uh, they did kind of go down and uh, they weren't able to score touchdowns off, the, you know, kind of the big yards they got. I mean, just what was working when they kind of got down to the red zone and into those kind of tougher situations? Uh, what was working on defense for you guys? Yeah, the reason why they got down there was a uh, little mishaps on our part, uh, bad eyes by some of us in the secondary and linebackers and miss red gaps. But once they got down there, uh, we just decided to bend but not break. So it was good that they missed a couple field goals and uh, we held them on a couple of possessions. Yeah, to kind of build on that, I mean, like you said, there were the mishaps and the big plays. So when you leave this game, do you feel, do you put more weight on the, you're more worried about the big plays given up or more pleased with the, the stops in the red zone and whatnot? Uh, more pleased about the stops. Uh, <laughs> There are going to be mishaps and adversity, adversity during the game, but we just have to figure out ways to come back and just uh, stop them and not have them get in the end zone. Jabril Pelini's obviously had a lot of success at LSU, especially in his first go around. But this this start, um, I'm sure it isn't what he envisioned. But how much do you feel like it was important for you guys maybe to? I don't know if he needed any help with his psyche at all. I mean, I'm sure he, he was probably strong mentally, but do you think this does something for him or, or that you guys wanted to play well for him in a game like this? Yeah, Coach Pelini, he's really a player's coach and he really cares about us and everything. And we just, uh, earlier in the week, me, Jacoby and Damone, we just all decided that, hey, we've been playing really bad these past couple games and we just need to show everybody that Coach Pelini, his scheme and everything that he's been doing for us uh, is something that really fits our style. So uh, just coming out with the W and holding them to the amount of points we did. Uh, I know we gave up a few at the end, but it really showed how we can be as a whole defense. And Jabril, um, are some of these you know large explosive plays that come against you guys, is that a byproduct of being aggressive? Is that just kind of the cost of doing business or is that something that can be ratcheted up and you can still get those, uh, you know, tackles for loss and such? Yeah, that's just something that, that can be fixed. Uh, that's mostly on the players, us just losing our eyes and just trying to make a play or just uh, not focusing during the play. So that's something that we can fix up on ourselves. Yeah, TJ, uh, he's been preparing all summer uh, and all fall camp just for this moment. And he got to show everybody that he was ready. And he uh, it's bad that Miles went down. But TJ, he came right in and stepped in and didn't miss a step. So TJ, he was prepared for the moment right when he went in. Hey, Jabril, Preston Guy here. Um, Question about, so that first drive came out looking pretty shaky, you know, three plays, 85 yards. Uh, but from that point on, you know, you gave up about only 300 yards for the rest of the game. Uh, did anything happen in between there? Were there any adjustments or anything that, that really straightened y'all out there? Yeah, we had certain adjustments with our D-line. Uh, it was, yeah, it was a couple of them that uh, didn't really get the calls right away, but uh, we, made that adjustment right quick, and then for the rest of the game, uh, we started to lock them down. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Jarrell. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you. The first question will be from uh, Scott Ravelin. 
Hey, John. Um, looks like you got you guys had an all around effort tonight. Uh, really helped uh, TJ with the running game. Just talk about the support you were able to give him, where the game wasn't all on his shoulders as a freshman quarterback making his first start. Um, you know, TJ, he he was very calm. You know, before the game and during the game. So, you know, it it was it was easy just to be on his side with everything, calm him down. It's just you know. When, when he first started, you know, everything was kind of fast for him and, you know, he made a couple of mistakes, but, you know, for a freshman, you know, and coming in and just balling like that, that was just unbelievable. And for him to just stay composed, uh, you know, I, don't, I have no, I have a lot of words for that, but, you know, it was sensational for him to just come in and be so calm. But, you know, me and TJ have a, a nice relationship and and I'm, I'm so happy for my dude. I'm so happy for TJ. He played a very calm game he was like I said he was composed the whole game so um hey John this is uh, Shay with 24 7 sports um how did it feel to get the start and then how much does it help getting a bunch of touches in a row early to kind of get into your rhythm as opposed to maybe coming in later in the game well you know um you know getting that early start you know it's it's always good to warm up early you know get my legs going and you know, it was a cold game, and to come out just pounding it like that, you know, it, it, it woke up South Carolina defense. And, and I'm so proud of my old line, and I'm so happy they, they, they stepped up big time this game. And we got, you know, that gave us a big, a huge confidence boost for the next game, so. John, uh, you know, the goal line situations were talked about after the Missouri game, and you had that big leap on the goal line. How how much how good did that feel to score there like that and how 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 much did you work on that and see it work today? Well, you know, as soon as like, you know, that we was going in the week after Missouri game, you know, we just knew we had to work on goal line. And you know, it was just I told TJ and I told I told Tori, I'm like I told Tori Carter, I told him, man, I'm getting in that end zone no matter what. And I told him I was gonna leap over it. So, you know, it was, you know, I was all of a sudden I just jumped and we we got great penetration on a, with our O line and I just leaped over and that was just it was great. And I mean, two tough losses. How much did you feel you guys needed to win today? Um, you know, we had to get that nasty gut feeling out of our stomachs and. You know, we we really needed this win, you know, and for South Carolina to beat Auburn and us to beat South Carolina, it's a it's a huge confidence boost for us going into Auburn week. And, you know, it just was an important week, and we just stayed focused through our practice as a team, and I loved the, in three, the energy through our practice every, every day of practice, and it was just, it was amazing. And I just, I had no doubt going into this game knowing that we was going to win, so. How you doing, John? This is the everybody who's me in radio. Talk about just the, the tandem that you and Ty Davis Price were able to um, put on the South Carolina defense tonight, because it's been a while since uh, we we haven't seen it all year. So you were close to, to 100, he was over 100. Just talk about the impact that you two pounding the rock against the defense had tonight. Well, you know, um, with a run, you know, we already have a pass game, and we just wanted to come out and just show that, that we had a run game for sure. And, uh, you know, me and Ty always motivate each other. Every, all, all of the running backs in the room motivate each other. And uh, we know we have the abilities. We just have to go on the field, go on the field and just, you know, show what we have. So it, it, was, it was great. I'm happy for Ty, and Ty is happy for me, and we, we just got to take it one game at a time. So. Guys, this be the last question. For John, let's see. One, give me just a minute. Okay, uh, Glenn. Glenn, you got the last question. Hey, John, you know, I know you mentioned the offensive line. I was just curious, you know, you guys seem to have a lot of design runs uh, at, at Ingram's side. I mean, just what makes him so good uh, in the run block game and, and why he's so successful at that part of the game? Well, you know, Ed, he's, he's powerful, you know. Um, like I said, he he has experience. He's been playing for quite a bit now, and you know you could you could trust Ed. You know, and I know for sure I can trust Ed because that's actually my roommate, and 
you have a bond, but like you know, Ed, he, he, he is barely is you know he barely make mistakes in the game. You know, he always execute on every play and and just Ed, he always makes up for everything. You know what I mean? So that's why we have a, a lot of design plays. But that goes for our whole O line, man. You know, our whole O line, we it don't matter. We can run left or right. You know, we expect to be successful in any run in our, in our run game. So like you know, like I said, Ed, Ed is a powerful, powerful dude and he's strong and we could trust him running. I could trust, I know I can't trust running behind him, so. All right, thank you, John. Thank you. Thank all of you.